Hi and welcome to part three of the first tutorial on coding um, and game design in Wolf.js. In the previous tutorial we added some text to our first game and um, we also um, made the game over and play again messages hide at the beginning of the game and added a um, timer so every one second if the time has not reached zero yet um, then make the time go down by one every second and display that time on the screen. Now what we're going to do in um, this tutorial is we're going to um, now basically check if the player is pressing certain keys on the keyboard and then move um, the player in that direction. Um, and to do that what we're going to need is a loop that can check constantly throughout the game um, what's going on. So we can't just check once at the beginning of the game uh, or we can't even really check every second um, if we're pressing certain keys on the keyboard to move the player around, we need to check that constantly um, several times a second. So to do that, we can use a forever loop and we can just say forever. And then uh, inside these brackets here, we put all the code that we want to run forever. So make sure you're careful with these brackets not to delete any or put them in the wrong place. Um, but what we can say is forever. And inside the forever loop, we can say if, and the condition for our first if statement is we're going to check if the player is pressing or the user is pressing the up key. So we can check if keys and then we can click this uh, first example, which is exactly what we want. If keys down includes up, which means if the user is pressing the up key. So if that condition is true, then we're going to add some code in here that will run to make the player object move up the screen. Okay. Now the condition here is if keys down includes up inside quotes in the brackets, we specify what key we want to check for. So it could be up, it could be down, it could be left or right. It could be a certain key like H. Um, so inside the quotes in uppercase letters, we specify the key. In this case, it will be up. And if the player is pressing up, we want to move the player object up the Y axis. So we can say player dot Y and to move up, we can say plus equals and then a certain amount, for example, five. Okay. Now there's different ways of making an object move. If you click on the motion block, you'll see you can just say the sprites name, for example, player dot move and how many spaces, which will make the player move right. And if you wanted to move left, you could say minus how many spaces for example 10 so dot move minus 10 you can also turn the player or um, point them in a direction or towards an object go to a specific location on the screen or to wherever the mouse is um, but what we're doing is we're changing the sprites position so we're using these examples here change x by and then a certain amount or change y by a certain amount so if we want to change the player position on the Y axis, we can say player dot Y plus equals, which means take whatever the player's current Y position is and add on this amount to it, which is five. Okay. Um, to make the player move down, we can say if keys down includes and just change that from up to down. And we can say player dot Y minus equals five. Okay. We can do the same thing for left and right, um, but we'll work with the x-axis here. So if keys down includes left, then we want the player on the x-axis to move left. So minus equals five spaces. And lastly, if, let's let that auto complete. If keys down includes, change that to right, then we'll move right. So player.x plus equals five. Okay. So let's click in the game and let's see if that works. So press up, we can move up. If we hold it down, it moves up. If we hold down, it moves down. Press left, right. So it's moving where we want it to move. Okay. Um, now the next thing we can do is we can hit the enemy here and we want to collect a point when we hit the enemy. So still inside the forever loop, we'll make some space and we'll say if 
And the condition here that we want to check is if the player is touching the enemy. And we can say pretty much exactly that. If player dot touching, and then in brackets, we can specify what we want to check as touching. If the player is touching the enemy, then what we'll do is we'll increase the score, we'll update the score on the screen, and we'll make the player the, the enemy respawn to another random location. So to check if one thing is touching another in the game, we say if whatever we want to check, dot touching, and then the other thing we want to check. So if the player touching the enemy, then we'll say score, and we, we want to increase the score. So we could say equals score plus one, or to shorten that, we could say plus equals one, or to make that even shorter, we can just say score plus plus, which is increment by one. We also need to update the score on the screen. So we can say score text dot text equals score, the word score, colon and space, and then add on to the end of that word, the actual value of the score. So now we can test that. And what happens is whenever we're touching the enemy, the score is going up. It's going up quite a lot. So what we want to do is make Basically, as soon as we hit the, the enemy, make the score go up by just one and move the enemy somewhere else in a random position. To do that, we can say enemy.x equals, and rather than making it a certain position or particular position on the x-axis, we can make it a random position. Now we could say random x if we wanted to, and that would be a random x position. But we can also specify a random position between two values. So for example, a random position on the x-axis between x position 0 and x position 10. Um, but rather than putting in exact values there, we could even say something like this. Make the enemy's x position equal to a random position between min x, which is the very far left of the screen, and max x, which is the very far right edge of the screen. So at the moment, it's respawning in a random position between the left and right side of the screen. Now to make it respawn in a random position on the y-axis, we can do pretty much the same thing, that we say enemy.y equals random min y and max y. Okay, there we go. Pretty cool. Okay, so um, the next thing that we can do is we can check if the time is equal to zero, then we um, so the time will stop. But if the timer reaches zero, we want the player to hide, the enemy to hide, um, and we can display a game over message. Okay, so we can add that while we're still in, still inside this forever loop. And if we click on this the curly bracket at the start of this forever loop, it highlights it and puts a little box around it and shows the matching one down here. So to make sure we're still inside the forever loop, we need to be above this bracket, or before that bracket, okay? So we can say if, the condition is if time is equal to zero, so three equal signs, if time is equal to zero, we'll make the player hide, we'll make the enemy hide, Oops, I've just messed up those brackets there. So we need brackets after hide, like that. And we'll make the game over text show. As well as the play again message. We'll make that show as well. Okay, so <clears throat> let's test this out. Move around, try and catch some of these monsters. Oops. And... As soon as the timer reaches zero, the timer will stop, and we see the scores also stopped um, because we can't keep moving around. So the player's no longer there, enemy's no longer there, and we see game over and press P to play again. All right, that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, what we'll do is allow the player to start another game by pressing P on the keyboard to play again and we'll make the game restart, and we'll also um, make it so that, we just um, change the code there a bit so that 
the game starts again. Also make it so we can't go off the edge of the screen like that and get um, lost. Oops, there we go, back. So you can see that at the moment we can go off the edge of the screen. It might be hard to find our way back on the screen if we go too far. So we'll look at how to fix that in the next tutorial. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.